In the previous session, we looked at what it means to live a life of sacrifice, a call to carry our cross daily and follow, a call to give sacrificially towards the expansion of the work of God, a call to forsake all hindrances and distracting factors, to focus on Jesus Christ. It is about realizing we are all given various gifts and talents with which we are to serve the Lord and bring glory to His holy name. It is also a call to lay aside all distractions and sins which do easily beset us and to run our race with patience towards our heavenly destination. However, in this session, we are looking at a step further in the call from God. We are discussing on the call to holiness and godliness. We are discussing on the essence of following and serving the Lord with a clean and pure heart. We are looking at the importance of following and serving the Lord with the fear of God in our heart. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 22. Not everyone that say unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that do the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful things. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk in iniquity. This passage is very clear about following the Lord and serving him by doing his will with all our heart. The passage proves to us that the actual essence of following and serving the Lord is by doing his will and obeying his commandment and walking in his instructions for our life. The passage proves to us that one could be going to church and calling upon the name of the Lord in prayers without readiness to do the will of God. For example, you cannot be living in consistent immorality and wickedness while you are a member of a church and still expect to inherit the kingdom of God. For instance, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 16 to 18, Jesus tells us that you shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes of tongues or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. In essence, Jesus is saying, you will recognize his true followers by the fruits of the spirit they bear. If you have been spiritually born again and you truly belong to Jesus, then you will bear good fruit, which is obedience. The verse 22 of that passage says, some people will say they had prophesied in Christ's name and cast out demons in his name and done many great works in his name. But he would tell them he never knew them because they are workers of iniquity. How do you walk in holiness before the Lord? In John chapter 15 verse 5, Jesus says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Jesus tells us that we cannot do this by ourselves unless we abide in him because we can do nothing apart from him. He says in John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But how can one be born again? By believing in Jesus, through faith, for our salvation from our sin, according to Romans chapter 10, verse 9, where the Bible says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Therefore, only by abiding in Jesus will we be able to walk in a way that is pleasing to God. 
And this is to educate us that we cannot bribe God with our great ministerial works and miraculous exploit. When we don't walk and live according to his perfect will, we cannot be living in sin and expect God to be glorified in our lives. Apostle Paul writing to the Corinthians said, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkard, nor revelers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. As we follow the Lord and serve Him in our capacity, in our daily lives, we must live our life in godliness and holiness, not as fornicators, as adulterers, or as thieves and drunkards. It was said of Judas Iscariot in John chapter 12, verse 4 to 6, the disciples who betrayed Jesus, that he was following Jesus Christ, also performing miracles and casting out devils, when they were sent out to preach to the people, that he was a thief, stealing from the general purse. Is it not ridiculous? Is it not ironical that a disciple following the Lord Jesus Christ, also preaching and casting out devils, will also be a thief, stealing from the ministry purse? So, in the life of some Christians who are so busy for the Lord Jesus Christ, serving him and bringing souls to the kingdom of heaven, but they themselves are walking on the road to perdition. Therefore, living a holy life in following him is loving him and doing his will as it's written in 1 John chapter 2. It says, And hereby do we know that we know him if we keep his commandment. He that says, I know him, and keep not his commandment is a liar. And the truth is not in him. This is the sign that we are in Christ. And I've come to know God if we keep his commandment. This is not to say that our obedience earns us God's favor, but that our obedience in keeping his commands is proof that we do belong to God. And I've come to know him. So, if we say we abide in God, we ought to walk in the same way that he walked by walking in his footsteps. Therefore, Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 7 that only those who do the will of God the Father will enter the kingdom of heaven. Not those who are following and serving in ungodly and unholy living. David expressed similar mind of God here. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walks in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that walk deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that tells lies shall not tarry in my sight. From the above passage, we see that it is the will of God to live godly and holy in his presence. And it is not the will of God for his children to live their lives sinning continuously. However, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 to 2, the Bible says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the perpetration for our sin, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. We see from the above word of God that we are not to go on sinning. But when we stumble in sin, and we, we have Jesus as our helper and our perfect Savior, who took the penalty for our sin on himself by dying on the cross in our place. According to Romans chapter 3, verse 22, which says, Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all that believe, for there is no difference. Thus, we have been given the perfect righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Zechariah, when John the Baptist was born, spoke prophetically the earnest desire of God for us all. In Luke chapter 1, verse 74 to 75, he says that he will grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemy, might serve him without fear 
in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. It is the earnest desire of the Lord that we might serve him in holiness and righteousness to tap all the goodness and the benefit of serving him and excelling in life and finishing well. Here is Apostle Paul's admonition concerning the call of God to holiness. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, he wrote by the inspiration of God. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord stands sure having this seal. The Lord knows them that are his. Let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. It has been established that those who carry the name of the Lord Jesus Christ should depart from iniquity because God is holy. And he desires that those who will serve him and work for him will serve him and walk with him in spirit of fear of God. In conclusion, therefore, the Lord is calling us all who have decided to follow him and serve him to put on the garment of holiness and be ready to serve and walk with him in godliness and in the fear of God in order for us to please him. Till we meet again in the next session, keep following and serving the Lord in the fear of God. God bless you.